Hello and welcome to Sodium Potassium Pump. My name is David Woodruff. I am the editor of Critical Care Nursing Made Incredibly Easy. I hope to make this incredibly easy for you too. So let's talk a little bit about this sodium potassium pump and what it does. It's necessary for normal cellular function. So the sodium potassium pump is an active energy pump that is actually in the cell membrane and it helps to create a resting potential for that cell, which means that it's going to make it excitable or able to do things, maybe to conduct energy. It also helps with cellular transport. Because it is an active function and it requires energy to be able to work, it requires ATP, it is going to help with cellular transport energy being produced maintains our cellular volume. Keep in mind that sodium and potassium, and those are uh, two of the things that help us to move fluid around in the body. Sodium is primarily responsible for water and our water levels outside of cells, whereas potassium is responsible for water level inside cell. So let's take a look at what is going on here. We have less sodium and more potassium inside the cell at our resting electrical potential. So now if you think about what those terms mean, when we talk about having cellular excitation, what are some of the things that come to mind? One thing could be maybe brain activity and nerves, okay, so the excitation, the nerve activity, right? So that would be one place where we have the sodium potassium pump being used. The heart muscle or any muscle could also have the sodium potassium pump have a function. And then maintaining our cellular volume, well, if we're not able to do that, we're going to have cellular dehydration, which is going to cause those cells to not function appropriately. Now, again, think about this in terms of any cell in the body. If it's a liver cell, the liver's not going to function well. If it is a heart cell, the heart's not going to function well. So when we're talking about those things causing changes to how the cell functions, we have to be thinking in terms of whatever that particular cell is is. So when these levels are abnormal, when there's not enough sodium, not enough potassium, too much of either one, etc., we're going to have abnormalities in our neurologic function, in our cardiac function, and in our fluid volume in and out of our cells. So this is an illustration illustrating what happens here with sodium and potassium. The inside of the cell is uh, down on the bottom, and the outside of the cell is up there at the top. So you see we have more sodium. Sodium is actually being pumped out of the cell, and potassium is being pumped into the cell. This creates a, a, an abnormal energy. So it creates, it's like static electricity. You build up this energy, and then that makes the cell able to be able to do something. So contract or conduct electrical energy or whatever it is that that cell is supposed to do. But this is the impetus behind allowing that cell to be able to function the way it's supposed to function. So we need to have a normal functioning sodium potassium pump. And of course, sodium potassium pump is reliant upon this. They need to be pumped in and out. It's not just passive. So we have to have ATP being produced in order to be able to maintain our normal sodium potassium pump. Not enough ATP, then what happens is the sodium potassium pump doesn't work as well and we have too much fluid rushing into the cell. We don't have our potassium coming into the cell and we don't have a normal functioning cell. If you'd like to learn more about nursing emergencies to decrease complications in your patients, rapidly detect problems, and implement prompt action, check out our program called Nursing Emergencies at thenursingprof.com. Thank you for joining me for Sodium Potassium Pump. My name is David Woodruff, and until next time, bye now.